So what is this golden nugget? What is this special thing that makes these books top bestsellers? Well, I'm now in my Kindle and I'm looking at a book written by Dale Carnegie called The Quick and Easy Way to Effective Speaking. Now remember, his book How to Win Friends and Influence People was one of the books we looked at earlier. It's a huge success. So let's hear it from the man himself. I've gone to a particular section in this book which I've highlighted. So let me read this to you. The rules from How to Win Friends and Influence People can be listed on one and a half pages. The other 230 pages of the book are filled with stories and illustrations to point up how others have used these rules with wholesome effect. So what is the golden nugget? It is this stories, uh, illustrations, anecdotes and things like that, yes as well, but mainly stories. So he, Dale Carnegie is actually saying here that if you just put it all down on a sheet to, to a paper, one and a half pages. It'd be a very short book, and if he'd done that, yeah, we'd have still got those facts, but we wouldn't have probably took action on them, and I doubt very much his book would have become very successful at all. What's made this book valuable is the stories, and that's what the secret of the success of this book is. So why stories? Well, what would you rather read? A textbook full of facts, a little bit like those one and a half sheets, but just... Facts after facts after facts, or a collection of stories. Um, for me, stories, and I think that I, I, I can speak for the majority of people, certainly anyway, that stories are, is the one. When you look at the top best-selling books on Amazon, I mean the top echelon of books, uh, I think you'll find very few, if any, textbooks there. Uh, the books, certainly I'm talking about non-fiction here, not fiction. The top books there, you will find, I would say, in every single one, with perhaps an exception, they are full of stories. Okay, stories that convey all the principles and methods and everything else in that book. Okay. I'm back now at the book which I found very, very good, called The Psychology of Influence of Persuasion. Or should I say, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion. Sorry. Um... Now this book, as we noticed earlier, was a very, very successful book and uh, the reason why is th this book also is full of uh, stories, examples and so on. It's just littered with them and that's what makes this book so great because, again, I could have just written it down on one page or whatever, all the stuff that I learned from this book, but it's how it's taught because the stories demonstrate it and make it memorable and it shows you how these things work in real life and everything else and it's what makes this book great so why do they work so well well they get you to remember we remember stories a lot more because i remember a story when i was a child and it used to at the end of every day when i was in the infant school it was time for the story time and we used to sit around the teacher on the floor and i still remember this you know, the smell of the classroom, the sun shining through the big windows. And the teachers sat there reading the story. And a particular one I always remember was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. And I remember uh, to this day, now as a grown adult, the pictures I had conjured up in my mind when I was listening to this story. And I can still remember, you know, the smell of the clothes in the wardrobe, the, the, the colour of the white snow and the the witch, what she looked like when she came along on her sleigh. This was in my mind, you know, before the films. So, and I still remember that now. But also stories also that I've heard help me remember principles. And I remember those stories a lot more than just the facts. If I just heard the facts, it's very likely I struggle to remember those facts. But the stories help me remember and understand those facts more. You see, the power of stories that we see ourselves experiencing them. It's like we're actually in the experience. You know, when I was I'm not actually really experiencing it, but it's pretty much the same thing because in our mind we imagine ourselves in it. So like when I was a child is into that story and I was sitting on the floor, it was like I was actually there. I was actually going in the wardrobe and I was walking through the snow and, you know, it's like we're really there. And that's the beauty of how this is a great teaching tool 
great teaching tool. It can do all sorts of things and do everything for you. You only have your words you see in a book and the best way to demonstrate is, is anything is by showing and giving people a picture and because you've only got your words it's going to be very difficult unless you put a picture in a book but even then it's not going to be as good as moving pictures stories get you know it gets them to see the picture in their mind and it makes them live it out live it live in the experience and it's like they're experiencing them it themselves and that experience is what teaches them it's how we learn it let's face it when we learn things through life through experience experience is a great teacher so now we know what they are I'm going to now move on to showing you how to put these in your own book now when I say stories are what makes a book great I don't just mean a book with any old story in it you know a bunch of stories just thrown together to make a book that wouldn't really do it uh, there's a reason for the stories and we're going to look at what those things are and what these stories do and how we can come up with the stories and how we can actually write them in our books and that's what the rest of this course is about and this is this what's going to make every book you write shine and make people rave about it and talk about it either to people or through email or face to face or even just by writing reviews on your book 